I'm Nigel Gates, and I'd like to thank everyone for joining and uh, this webinar on financial clarity and in a hazy landscape. Joining me today is James Orsabrook, who is the CFO here at J-Curve Solutions. James, thank you for joining me today. Um, James, you were a, a finalist in the CEO magazine for CFO of the Year. Uh, you're the CFO of the largest NetSuite partner of the world. What's your secret? Uh, look, the, secret, the secret's having a, a fantastic team, a great culture, and most importantly, uh, an awesome ERP solution that allows um, my team to do their job efficiently and effectively. So I think a good place to start would be a recent poll that we've done. And we asked everyone when they registered what's their biggest concern for business success was for the next six months. The top three priorities of businesses right now, and James just imagine we had a little drum roll machine happening, uh, but they are cash flow which I actually personally think was fairly predictable. I probably don't think that, you know, this whole COVID and, you know, hazy landscape that we're living in right now ha has changed that. But do you think recent developments, you know, such as the COVID is, make, as, as COVID is making cash flow a bigger focus for our businesses? Uh, 100%. Ca cash is king. You, you guys hear it all the time internally at Jacob's, Jacob Solutions. Uh, cash um, has to be the number one thing that um, finance teams are thinking about. Um, in the current uh, business climate. Uh, for many businesses, their sales are down by more than 50%. So uh, they've got to work out and make sure they've got sufficient cash reserves to cover their obligations and remain in business. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and you're right, I do hear from you all the time, cash is king. Um, automation and process uh, improvement was that come in second. Now, I would assume this is becoming more important as many businesses are running a little, a little leaner than they were in a, in a pre-COVID world. Um, do you think that that is a big part of why business process and improvement is is has come up on this list as number two? I, I do. So teams have had to um, adapt, and unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of businesses have had to let go of, of good staff members and are reduced in size, but they've still got their existing processes to to go through. So uh, look, I, I see the pandemic is uh, creating a real opportunity to allow businesses to really focus on process improvement uh, to make make sure prices are operating effectively um, and make changes where required. Um, the yeah. businesses that are agile and can adapt, they're the ones that are going to survive and flourish. And in, in coming in third place with a bang, I suppose, and I, I don't know if this would have been high on people's list, you know, a year ago, but business continuity. So, James, I assume this has gained wildly in popularity over the last six months. Um, can you shed any light on why business continuity you think is such a big, big player now in, in this question? Yeah, look, Nigel, for, for many businesses, um, operating as they did pre-pandemic is physically impossible. Melbourne's still in lockdown. Uh, I know our business, we went home on a Friday and literally it, the COVID pandemic blew up over that weekend in mid-March that we were able to operate seamlessly because we had a strong business continuity plan in place. Uh, so that's why it, it's front of mind. Businesses have got to adapt. They've got to continue operating uh, to keep the yeah. lights on. But sometimes physically they it's... A different environment to what they were used to if they can't access an office. Yes, I, I do remember leaving the office on Friday and, and, well, you know, I think I've come back in the office once or twice since, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I agree. So a little bit about us. We, you know, James, we have roughly 600 customers using the various editions of NetSuite, making us the largest NetSuite partner in the world. Um, we are recently now exploring other cloud-based technology solutions like RIA, which is really popular for field service companies and so forth. Our footprint is growing globally, as many of our customers have also have operations internationally, um, which has maybe led our growth into other countries as well. Um, and I think this positions us well to discuss topics like financial clarity, um, as we've got, you know, a lot of customers in a lot of different industries doing a lot of different things. So, I mean, I suppose that's a little bit about us, but I, I think we've learned a lot from our customers, you know, and, and, and that's where we're getting a lot of this information from. Is that, would you agree? 100%. So it's, it's important customer engagement, learning, learning from our customers, being there for our customers, having the right solutions for our customers is, is key. And look, we've been doing this for over 20 years. We're an ASX listed company. We've got um, professional employees, good quality employees, a great culture. So yeah, look, I think we are, yeah, we've got some insights that we can definitely go through over the next 20 minutes. Yeah. 
Um, so the agenda today, look, we're really just going to uh, explore the key points around, you know, financial clarity and so forth. So understanding, you know, financial positions, understanding the performance of the company and how, you know, using that suite we can do that. Um, the need for financial modelling and a scenario planning uh, is, you know, I think that has been something that I know James has been really key for us over the last six months. Um, staying on top of cash flows is something that will, you know, the the people that are here have wanted to hear about um, the importance of having live financial data um, and probably having, and more than that, James, I think having that single source of truth with live financial data, right? Like it's not like we're picking things up and putting them someone else and double entry and so forth. Um, and the role of technology for the modern CFO, uh, we'll, we'll touch on that as well. Um, so James, as, as I said, you're the number one dancer at j -Curve Solutions and also happen to be the CFO. Um, how did you respond to the COVID-19 pandemic when it first hit? Tell me a bit, just walk me through those first few days, I guess. Oh, look, it, it was um, adapting quickly, Nigel. I, I remember that weekend vividly. I think it was the 15th of March that we were having executive team calls, strategizing plans for the week, implementing our business continuity plan. But most importantly for me as, as the numbers men, um, it was critically assessing our financial position and financial performance and starting to forecast ahead for multiple different scenarios. Um, in so many respects, it was Finance 101 and remembering 10, 15 years back to my uni days, um, but just being across the numbers, just making sure that I could see things happening real time and not, not waiting for things to happen, being planning ahead, basically. Yeah, I remember that time too. It was it was pretty hectic. It was um, there was a lot of people not knowing. I mean, I, I think the thing of COVID or any pandemic you have is you really don't know what's going to happen next, right? So there was a lot going on, and you know, what did you need to prioritize? What did you use to prioritize? Um, you know, at, at that time, what what was key on your mind? Yeah, look for, for me, the number one priority uh, was being quickly across our key business metrics and KPIs. Um, so having NetSuite, or maybe a little biased, we are a reseller of NetSuite, but having that single source of truth uh, was key. And so having confidence, the data that I was making decisions from, um, and the data is accurate, easily accessible, um, and can be relied upon. Um, so not having to reconcile between multiple systems, um, having servers that I couldn't access. Uh, so having report snapshots set up to make sure I was aware of our current cash balance, our debtor balance, our accounts payable um, and other key performance indicators such as our current ratio, our sales pipeline coming up for the month, um, but most importantly, what were our upcoming customer renewals? I remember, you know, when I was younger, I was working in a, in a business once and we used to have these manager meetings, I guess, and all the different departmental managers would come in and we'd, we'd have a conversation about what was going on in the business. And, you know, the CFO would get up in there and he'd talk about those things. And then I'd look at my paperwork and it'd be a different number altogether. And just, you know, having someone say, even if it's something as little as sales and cost of goods sold is different, it throws, it just throws that meeting out. So I understand the importance of having that single source of truth so that everybody's looking at the same numbers, everybody's seeing the same thing. There's no hijacking your meeting and questions thing because people are looking at two different things. So I, I really understand how important having that single source of truth is and everybody reading from the same playbook, I guess, you know? Yeah, look, um, we're, we're, we're able to do that. We're, our executive team was, was a team of six and we're in six different locations, but we're able to look at the same data real time um, constantly. So yeah, single source of truth was imperative. Yeah, and it's critical to understand that current financial situation at a glance, you know. So that's what, from, from what you've just said before, you, you know, you've looked at where the business was right now. You're looking at your current debtors. You're looking at all your liabilities. You're seeing that right now. What about looking ahead, though? To, to talk to the people about that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, what, that's what changed with the pandemic. It, it was key that I was focusing on what were our commitments, what, what were the upcoming liabilities that were owed to suppliers, um, and looking at every single line, line item of expenditure, um, and in particular, when contracts might end. Uh, I worked up an analysis that put all of our costs into effectively two buckets, um, discretionary spend and essential ongoing costs. So it's really thinking ahead and making sure that I'm aware of what, what the outgoings are going to be um, over the next six to 12 months, um, because yeah, often the, the other side of it is if we don't get as much um, sales or cash collected as we'd expected, then I need to know what the, the base level of expenditure can be. Yeah, yeah, I completely understand. Um, 
So there's a lot of unknown, right? We're, we're in a world that six months ago, we, we don't really know what's going to happen with this virus. And, you know, to be true, we, we still don't, right? We don't know what it's going to do to the economies around the world. Um, we didn't then, I mean, we know it's not going to have a particularly positive effect on it, I suppose, but you don't really know what's going to happen. You don't know how bad things are going to get. So financial modelling and the scenario plan that you were talking about, um, did that help you to guide us through that unknown period? Is that how, how did you rely on that? How, how did you trust the figures were right and making decisions on things that was such a, you know, I guess a, a, in a world that was, there was so much uncertainty. How did, how did this help you? Yeah, look, at, so forecasting and scenario planning was key, Nigel. Um, it, it allowed our business to plan ahead and adapt accordingly. Um, I always thought that I prepared what were comprehensive forecasts, but the COVID-19 pandemic certainly showed um, that it was imperative that those models they had an extra degree of flexibility and agility. Uh, so look, I spent the first part of April really uh, remodeling my financial models to, incall, um, to incorporate various um, uh, assumption levers. Um, assumption levers effectively being uh, inputs that I could change that showed the outcome for any number of scenarios. You know, do you, I don't know if you remember this, and you, actually I probably do think you remember this. How many assumptions were there? Like that had to be a fairly complex bit of material you were doing there. Oh, there's hundreds of scenarios. So it was, it was me being able to change any number of scenarios, um, multiple scenarios at once to show what the output would be on our cash balance, our cash flow and operating profitability. So yeah, me being able to sit down with our CEO, our board of directors and basically saying, if I change this, this and this, that's the outcome. That's how much cash we're going to have in the bank in 12 months time or this is what effect it's going to be going to have on our operating profitability. Yeah, so those assumption levers were just crucial. It were crucial and 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 in being able to rely on what was going to happen next and, and how you communicated to the board and I guess also to the CEO and so forth. Yeah, look, that that they were key. Um, look, I, I live by the saying, uh, I'd much rather over communicate rather than let others make assumptions. So I was able to clearly say what my assumptions were or what the impacts of changes to those assumptions were, and thereby what the impact on cash flow and also operating profitability is going to be so there's a lot of scenarios there's a you know there's a lot of possible outcomes that could happen which is just to me sounds like a lot of work um was that the level of planning now looking back was that the level of planning that you think you needed 100 percent. so look that that gave us the ability to to um as well as we could we were affected as a business but it gave us the ability to have that comprehensive model and to plan ahead and make um educated decisions um so for example what a 40% reduction in our sales, what, what impact that would have on our cash flow and profitability. Um, so yeah, look at it, it, having that model and the right information going into that model from our ERP solution uh, um, was imperative to allow informed decisions to be made. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have to admit, and I, I'm gonna come back to it, but cash is king. I, I, I couldn't count the number of times I hear you say that. I think before every meeting you have with us, you must say in some way, cash is king. It just it just comes up and comes up. And it's one of the things that everyone wanted to ask about, you know, in here as well. So, you know, staying on top of their cash flows. So having that focus on that cash is king in our business, uh, how did you stay on top of our cash flows through the pandemic? Yeah, look, Nigel, without cash, you don't have a business. So for, for, for me, it's having that real-time accessible data. So on my NetSuite dashboard, it's having it in the top left-hand corner up in lights. Um, and it's also using that financial model that I explained earlier to, to basically model up what the various scenarios would be so that I know at any particular one point in time what the cash balance would be uh, and then allowing the, the team to make um, decisions from that data. And how far would you go out? Would it, you know, like, you know, six months, five years, two, two years, how, how far would you go out with that sort of, to have that six month or two year view of the cash flow? Yeah, look, for, look a, a lot of businesses are sort of forecasting out for the month. Um, at, for, for our business, I, I've got that forecast actually out two years. So at any one point in time, I can say what our cash balance is likely to be in a week, one month, six months, 12 months or two years. So. Um, and also having a number of different scenarios. Um, so I was using that information. I actually started reporting to my board of directors uh, four different scenarios. So a best case, the worst case, a likely case, um, and an average case. Uh, so that look, that's key. Um, 
as a listed company, we had to sign off that we're a going concern. So those financial models that I um, worked up basically allowed um, our auditors to, to tick off the, the assertion that we are a going concern and will be a going concern, which we are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're talking a lot about, you know, all the different modelling you do. Having the right ERP solution, you know, we, we, and I've talked about we use NetSuite. So having the right ERP solution, how important was that during this period? Yeah, look, it, again, it was imperative. Um, through the pandemic, we had all of our team members working remotely. Um, so it became even more important to have accurate and real-time data to be able to see those trends occurring as they're occurring. Um, so being able to quickly um, answer questions asked of me and to make recommendations to guide the business financially through the pandemic um, so having that right ERP solution was key um, if I look at our finance team I run a, a pretty lean and, and small finance team so we quickly finish off um, our month end reporting it's not a couple of weeks to do month end it's literally day three reporting um, so rather um, and then we're able to basically look forward and help the business um, so rather than looking uh, in the rear vision mirror for a couple of weeks while we finish off uh, past results we're, we're really using that ERP solution for that live financial data. So I've got my laptop, I'm on the way, it's a Friday after work and I'm on my way home. How important was it for me to have, be able to have that information? It was, you know, it, completely immeasurable. I can't tell you how important it was that I could be able to get all the information I needed from my customers. You know, I could do my CRM on my phone. Um, everything I had was, was with me, right? Like I, everything was in my computer. I could, or any device, right? So it was just really handy to have that information there. So working from home and you having a financial team now and talking about the data of the company, how important was it to have financial data accessible remotely and securely? Again, I've said it a couple of times, but imperative. So yeah, that Friday afternoon, um, all of our team members took home their laptops and most team members actually haven't been into the office um, for the past six months. So that we've been able to work quite seamlessly from home. Uh, so having that um, accurate data um, in the ERP solution, um, I've got team members in my finance team uh, located all around Sydney and, and one in the Philippines. So we're able to all look at the, the same data. We're able to update it. I'm able to effectively manage and monitor their performance and the work that they're doing um, because we've got that single source of truth being the NetSuite ERP solution. So, so and I have to admit, like for me, it was very similar in sales. So having been able to see my pipeline, be able to see what's still due and, and if one of the team members changed, you know, the date of the deal or something like that, knowing that that's been changed and, and I report that back to you was was super critical for us as well. So, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah. Look, I, I can't imagine running, running a business in 2020 through the pandemic based off servers, um, paper. I, I don't know how they've coped without sort of cloud-based um, ERP solution. Yeah, no, agreed. Um, so technology, net, things like NetSuite uh, and the use of NetSuite, how do you, how important is that now for, you know, for the modern CFO? You know, how, how have things changed, I guess, over time and why is technology now such a key part of, you know, a CFO's life? Yeah, look, at Nigel, a, a CFO, a modern CFO needs to be more than a numbers person. They need to be all, across all of the key business metrics and trends. They're the strategic advisor to the business and, the, and most importantly, the guardian of processes. So having the right technology solution is imperative. Um, it can save so much time and effort investing right now in the right um, technology solution for the, for the long run. So for Jacob Solutions, that's NetSuite. Um, it is our, our all-in-one ERP solution. It's our single source of truth um, for all aspects of our business, be it financials, projects, sales. It's scalable um, and has been able to be set up to manage the business from anywhere all the time. Uh, so the right technology ensures that I focus my attention on the right areas that I can influence. Yeah, I know, you know, when myself or the team, when we're talking to businesses who are considering, you know, upgrading to NetSuite and things like that, mostly the person we're talking to is the CFO. It's them who are like, I just can't deal with all this different. I'm putting data from this point to this point. I'm taking things out of Excel and putting them in here and, and all this data duplication and so forth. And I know it's something that comes up quite a lot. So, you know, I also see that CFO role as the person when we're talking about, you know, scaling a business, when we're talking about, you know, becoming more efficient, it seems to be that all that still comes back and focuses around that CFO, you know? 
yeah, look, often often it is left to the C- CFO and sort of, um, yeah, just, just making sure that rather than do things two or three times and having having confidence in the information that you're conveying to other stakeholders, it's it's imperative. Yeah. that um, So one of the things that comes up a lot is that single source of truth that people are looking for, you know. So I think I might have hinted at it before when I was talking about in a previous job I worked at, we were getting sales data from one area. We're getting um, cost of goods sold data from another area. We're getting inventory data from a warehouse solution. You know, we're getting data from all these different points. It was very easy to have that, you know, find a mistake in that data, I guess, or find a, di- a discrepancy between one person's thoughts of it or another person's thoughts of it, right, depending on when they downloaded a report or just a mistake they've made or different assumptions they've used. So I think it's important, you know, to have – and to have a real-time single source of truth data, you know, from wherever the team is situated, we're all looking at the same data. That has been evidenced in in, in your role now? De- definitely. Like, um, as, as I said earlier, we've, we've got executive team meetings happen weekly. We're all looking at the same data. It's We can update it during the meeting. We're all seeing that that updated data. Um, so we've got team members in, in Singapore. We've got team members in Australia. We're, we're all able to look at the same information and we, we don't have to sort of worry that it's not going to reconcile it. It reconciles, it's real time, it's easily accessible from anywhere at any time. Yeah. So I think um, I think what we might do now is actually have a quick look at NetSuite. I don't know if, if while I'm talking about NetSuite, if you want to highlight anything that you think is particularly good. I've got to, look, it's not one of our databases or one of our, it's not ours, it's just a demo database that I've got. Um, but I still think it would be good to highlight anything that maybe you think is, is really good there as well. So might just share um, my NetSuite page. So, so effectively, Nigel, if you've got an internet connection, you've got NetSuite, right? Yeah, exactly right. Um, so I might just show. Uh, James, can you see my my uh, NetSuite page now? Yeah, so the first thing that I see, I'm a, I'm a very visual person, Nigel, so straight away we're, we're looking at a, uh, a demo dashboard. Um, we've got information that's in nice, colourful, uh, large fonts, so you can quickly see trends, so 17.2% um, increase in expenditure. So as a CFO, I could very quickly drill into that information and see what's going on, because uh, obviously that would be a concern if we can't explain why it's gone up 17%. Um, the other big, the other big one, you're you're able to very quickly customize it to however you like the look and feel. So uh, within a couple of clicks, um, you can uh, change the information to um, however you or however I as the CFO um, use information and, and get the most out of the solution. Um, yeah, you're right. So I'm, I'm really quickly able to change the period. So you can see here if I'm looking at, you know, let's say I'm looking at accounts payable. You know, if I want to see it today versus same day last month, but if I want to change that, you know, it's very easy just to go into your setup and you can change the periods that you wish to change it for, right? So I could be looking at this year or this rolling quarter and I could compare it to last rolling quarter or similar things. Um, that information is also drilled through, right? So one of the things that we use a lot is this ability to drill through. So if I want to see this and, you know, if I walked into the office and saw my accounts payable was up by 35%, I might want to have a look at it. So, you know, I'm able to quickly come in here and just click in and see where all that money is going to and who's building this, right? So, and then I'm, you know, within a couple of clicks again, I can get right down into a particular company's two bills. And if I wanted to, I can open up an individual bill. So a, that ability to drill through, you know, within a couple of click clicks and get to a transactional level is just awesome. Uh, reminders are great. You know, they don't just have to be, you know, basic things like eight overdue invoices and so forth. It could be, you know, if you're selling goods to somebody, you you sell two categories, you sell dry goods and wet goods, um, you know, and a customer's buying more dry goods but less wet goods, you may not notice that type of stuff because their business, you know, they're buying about the same amount of money off you, but they're not buying wet goods. So if over X period of time and you get an X percent decrease, you can have that highlight as a, as a reminder to you so you know who to speak to about, you know, why they're not buying those things, that type of stuff, right? Um, but... You know, so you can be quite intelligent with the type of reminders you're using. You know, you talked a lot about financial forecasting and scenario planning. You're able to put, um, you know, formulas and so forth into Internet Suite so that people can add complex Excel-style formulas into NetSuite so you can get it all in here. Um, you know, like I know we a bit does it's just a standard sort of financial formula, but you can see here I've got a formula that's been entered into it 
to, to NetSuite, which you can add formulas in and so forth. So you're able to do this stuff within there. Um, you know, all of our solutions come with about 100 reports, which I know, you know, well, minimum about 100 reports. You know, some of them come with 300, 400, depending on the requirements of your business. Um, but if I want to open up my profit and loss, I can simply just quick, click on it. There's my P&L. You know, and if I want to show that by department or location or whatever else, I'm able just to quickly click on that type of information and, and get it across. Um, so it's very easy to, you know, to get that sort of stuff. And for those companies who are multi, uh, multi subsidiary like ourselves, so we're, we're a multi subsidiary country uh, company, you can have a subsidiary navigator, which allows you to very quickly and easily just change from one subsidiary, you know, to another subsidiary. So now I'm only looking at the invoices that are overdue for next week and so forth. So if I'm looking at this and I'm planning for the future, I can look at individual subsidiaries. I'm able to drill down into individual line items to figure out what's going wrong. Um, I don't just have to have them as metrics like this. I can have them as graphs that you can see here, um, you know, or I'll just pull this one across. I can have this, you know, accounts payable as a trend graph as well, right? So I can, I can change the way I view metrics. And as James said, he likes, um, you know, graphs and he likes colours and so forth. And that's really, really handy for someone like that to use, right? So really, really easy, very easy to use, um, very you customize it yourself and all of this stuff is comes out of the box. So when we set you up, you get a dashboard that looks very much like this, right? Just tailored for your business. Um, so I think we'll probably bring it up there. Is there anything that you wanted to add before we left? And Leo will ask the guys if there's any questions. Yeah, look, the, the only other, so you've shown dashboards there, Nigel. The, the other area um, which I find NetSuite very unique and helps my role in particular is scheduling in reports. So literally yep. at any one point in time, Wednesday morning, I get all my data reports automatically emailed through to me. Um, I could theoretically be on holidays and my month end reports would still go out. So that's just literally scheduling reports to certain team members at a particular point in time. So um, I, that's a functionality from a CFO's perspective that you can really set up your, your week and your, your month to, to operate seamlessly and automatically. All right. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if we've missed anything, any questions, please uh, please get in contact with us. Hopefully we'll see you again soon uh, and thanks for joining us. Bye for now.